So it's possible you came to this video because you're considering making your first telescope purchase. Or maybe you have a telescope already, but you're trying to learn about transitioning into astrophotography and what that entails. Regardless of what sort of situation you're in, this video will help you plan for the future of your astrophotography journey. I'll cover every step that I would recommend from buying your first telescope all the way up to where I'm at, taking pictures like these. So what is a good first choice for a telescope? I'd like to preface by saying that I do not recommend starting your journey jumping straight into astrophotography. What I would recommend is instead pick up a small portable tabletop telescope with a few eyepieces and a planetarium app for your phone. If you decide to go this route, this telescope will become your best friend. You'll learn the entire night sky through seeing it for yourself. The process of looking at it digitally on your phone first, locating it in the night sky all on your own and seeing it through your own eyes is going to be unlike anything you've ever experienced before. Looking at the moon, the planets, star clusters, and even some of the brighter deep sky objects, you'll start to slowly become more and more familiar with what's up above you. As for which telescope specifically to buy, I've got two recommendations for you right here. Maybe you're not so sure about this hobby. Maybe you just want a cheap telescope to sort of play around with and see how you feel. Astrophotography and even just astronomy in general can be very expensive. If you want an affordable telescope that'll let you figure out whether this hobby is right for you, I would recommend a Celestron first scope. You can grab one for about 90 bucks online and it comes with two eyepieces. It was my very first telescope. It allows you to see craters on the moon, the rings of Saturn, and the great Orion Nebula. It's a great choice for a complete beginner. However, maybe you're willing to spend a little bit more. If that's the case, I've done a little bit of research and I've heard great things about the Skywatcher Heritage 150P. It has a much larger aperture accompanied with a red dot finder to help you figure out where you're located. It'll give you a really quality view. This quality doesn't come without a price difference, however. The Heritage 150 is priced at around 265 bucks. If you're looking for some more information, all of the gear that I mentioned in this video will be linked in the description below if you want to check it out for yourself. I will always stand behind the statement that you should learn the night sky for yourself before sinking tons of money into gear. The process of understanding what exactly you're seeing when you look up at the night sky is one of the best parts about astronomy and astrophotography. The eyepiece set that I talked about briefly earlier will allow you to incorporate a little bit of variety into your viewing. It'll allow you to see the difference in size between targets, from Saturn to the Pleiades star cluster. Celestron makes a bunch of different eyepiece sets, I'll link a good one below this video. Finally, the Planetarium app will actually introduce you to the objects. The two that I recommend are Sky Guide for iOS users and Stellarium Mobile for anybody else. They'll let you find objects in the night sky and get you familiar with where they are from your location. So if you're following along with me here, after using this entry-level telescope for a while, you'll start to want more. Over time, you'll start to figure out what areas of this hobby are of the most interest to you. For me, it was deep sky astrophotography, so that's what I chose to pursue. But before we get into covering what some good upgrades would be, I wanna state something really important. Don't upgrade too fast. Get familiar with the gear that you have. The process of improving your relationship with this hobby and the night sky shouldn't be rushed. The real pride and enjoyment in this hobby comes from hard work with the gear that you have, getting results that make you happy. That being said, there does come a point where upgrades are necessary. When you reach that point, you'll know. This is where things can start to go in a million different directions. For the sake of this video, I'll be covering deep sky astrophotography because, again, that's what I chose. I will do my best to keep it as simple as possible. In terms of deep sky astrophotography, the best general tip I have for you guys is to keep things portable. That'll be an overarching theme as this video goes on. The setup that I would recommend to a first-time astrophotographer consists of three parts. The three parts to this setup are A, a refurbished DSLR camera if you don't have one already, B, a compact wide-field refractor telescope, and C, a portable star tracker. If you've watched any other videos on this topic of getting into astrophotography, that shouldn't be any sort of surprise and you've definitely heard that already. This setup seems to be the sort of unanimously agreed upon best beginner setup for astrophotographers in the 
the community. For the camera, it's less important what exact model you get. I used a Canon SL3 for years and I was super happy with the results I got out of it. If you have a digital camera on the shelf that you're able to switch in and out different lenses for, use that, it'll work great. If you don't have a camera like this, you will need to purchase one. The good news about this is that it's really hard to find a bad camera nowadays. An overwhelming majority of cameras that have come out in recent years will be perfect for deep sky astrophotography. For reference, when I say cameras, I mean DSLR or mirrorless cameras, anything that you can switch out lenses for. Just a thing to point out, if you are looking for some sort of guidance on some sort of specs that would be useful for deep sky astrophotography, keep in mind if your camera that you're looking at has a flip out screen or not. That flip out screen will be really handy in helping you avoid contorting yourself into weird positions when your telescope is pointed straight up or at a weird spot in the sky. Two camera models that I can personally stand by myself and say that are great options are the Canon SL3 or 250D or the Canon T7i. For the telescope, the name of the game will be keeping it wide field. Astrophotography will become so much easier when you have a telescope that isn't way too far zoomed in. A telescope such as the William Optics Zenith Star 61 or the Apertura 60mm FPL 53 doublet are two really high quality telescopes that are both purchased on the affordable side compared to their competitors. These telescopes will allow you to photograph the Andromeda Galaxy, the Orion Nebula, the Pleiades Star Cluster, and so much more in really sharp detail. Detail. Keep in mind your location, however. If you're in a really light polluted area, you're gonna wanna take a look at some light pollution filters. It's not hard to do research online. I'll link a few that I would recommend below, but just keep that in mind that it's gonna be really hard to shoot without a filter if you're in something like a Bortle 7 or higher. Finally, I've saved the most important piece of equipment for your first astrophotography rig for last. You need a high quality, reliable mount or star tracker. This is crucial. A very common question that a lot of astrophotographers get online is, what should my first telescope purchase be? While that is important, something that is much more important is your mount or your star tracker. The purpose of a star tracker is to do exactly what its name says, track the stars. You mount your telescope on the star tracker and turn it on, and once it's on, it'll start rotating at the speed that the night sky rotates for us. This will effectively freeze the stars in place and prevent them from getting blurry or moving out of your image frame. You can imagine why this piece of gear would be so important. If the star tracker you get can't hold hold your telescope or it doesn't track well, you can imagine that the images you get are probably not going to be something that you envisioned. The line between star trackers and actual equatorial mounts is getting blurred, but basically a star tracker is considered a much smaller portable one that you can put on a photo tripod and an equatorial mount is just a much beefier, usually much heavier version that you put on a real heavy tripod and mount a real telescope to it. A few years back, star trackers were mainly used for just camera lenses and DSLRs but now these star trackers are getting more and more advanced and you can put some smaller telescopes on them. And that's exactly what this setup is going to be. When you're looking online in the star tracker equatorial mount market, it is really hard to overlook the Skywatcher Star Adventurer GTI. It's small, it's light, it's portable, and it has a bunch of features that more advanced equatorial mounts also offer. The reason that I would recommend this equatorial mount is for that purpose. This star tracker can move with you as you upgrade your setup, incorporating more fancy things things like laptop control and auto guiding. The limiting factor here, however, will be that the Star Adventure GTI cannot hold anything heavier than 11 pounds. So you're limited to small telescopes and camera lenses. Although it'll be able to hold the Aperture 60 millimeter or the Zenith Star 61 just fine. If you find a different telescope that really speaks to you in that sort of size range, I'm sure it'll be able to hold that too. Retailers such as High Point Scientific also actually state the weight of the product that you're ordering in the description. So if you wanna do the math for yourself and see if the camera and the telescope adds up to under 11 pounds, you can do that. But the Star Adventure GTI will be able to hold that telescope and camera just fine, and through the app on your phone or a hand controller, you'll be able to tell it to go to specific objects in the night sky. Since you've hopefully learned the night sky through your observing with your first telescope, this should be really easy and you should know which targets are your favorites to go to. This will just make it a little bit easier. So in short form, those are the three pillars of a telescope setup that I would recommend for your first 
first astrophotography rig. However, keep in mind that you will still need to do some research on your own into the specifics. Maybe you have a specific price point and the gear that I've mentioned either goes above or it doesn't hit that mark. Also, keep in mind of any accessories you may need. I've already mentioned light pollution filters and auto guiding, but there's other things that you may want to look into such as dew heater bands. This video is not meant to perfectly describe the exact setup that you should use, but merely give you just an outline of a general concept of what you're looking for. The process of getting into astrophotography is a total black hole, and that's part of the fun of it though. The outline of a setup that I gave you should do a really good job at giving you your first astrophotography images, as well as sticking with you as you slowly upgrade your setup. Before I end it here, I'd like to make the general statement that you probably know what's best for you. If you truly feel like you're ready to skip over the DSLR step and jump right into some dedicated astro cams, go for it. I'm only giving out recommendations. Don't let me tell you what you can or can't do. The purpose of this video was to give an outline to beginners who have no idea where to get started. My first setup into astrophotography looked nothing like the one that I described in this video, and I turned out all right. Just make sure you don't think that you need to spend thousands of dollars to get any sort of results. So with all this being said, I hope that this video was able to at least make some of the first steps in figuring out your astrophotography journey a little bit clearer or easier. I look forward to hearing some of your guys' thoughts on the process that I described. If you're curious and you want to hear more thoughts, you can check out other places like other YouTube videos online, forums, or even just the comments of this video. Send me any questions you might have. I wish you the best of luck on figuring out your journey in this crazy hobby. I'll see you in the next video. Clear skies.